long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. Never gonna lose, never gonna win. Long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. Here we are. We are live and I've got Elaine back. Hello, Elaine. How are you? Hello, Ashley. I'm fabulous as always. Thank you. No, really, really good to see you. So um, for those of you uh, who don't know Elaine, Elaine was on my show a few weeks back uh, on the show that I do for a Cantons Bookkeeper. So that's my Wednesday show. This is my Tuesday show. This is my brand new show, Live and Linking. So we're going to uh, explore a little bit about LinkedIn. But the reason you've come back is you do disk profiling. So before we go into that, for those people that don't know who you are, that didn't see the last show, give us a little overview of who Elaine Godley is. Okay, well, Elaine Godley is uh, about to become an old lady. Um, I was I was described as an old lady the other day, and I'm three years off of seventy, which is remarkable. It's wow. just ridiculous. So um, that brings with it wisdom. It brings with it grey hair. It brings with it wisdom. Forty plus years of well, yeah, way more than forty years. Players of it. I can't even speak straight, business experience. Um, I've been managing partner of a number of different law firms. Uh, I run a big consulting division for Ernst & Young, Grant Thornton, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got a uh, good street cred experience with law, law firms and accountancy practices in particular, more accountancy practices. And I've run several businesses for myself over the years. And I'm a health mentor these days. So I link DISC behavioral profiling and health, which is the unusual bit. So I call it DISC plus Dot health that's my website and um we're going to be going through some of that today aren't we we certainly are so um I, I've, I've done a few disc profiles I, I went for a job oh donkeys years ago elaine and um they they disc profiled me and and basically i was going for a job as a i think it was a business consultant or something i can't remember i can't remember <laughs> and um basically they turned around and said you're perfect for this job look how your disc profile comes out da, 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 da. I, I didn't take the job it just seemed too salesy for me um but you've taken this another step further forward haven't you and um you can see health stuff you're, you're not clairvoyant or anything <laughs> like that are you well it, it's it's remarkably accurate um i have got training in um health and well-being i'm a trained nutritionist these days and a biohacker and that comes from many years of fixing my own health i was born with a kidney disease um that i was told was incurable and um i've had stage four cancer and various other things so i help people to reverse illness but i'm particularly interested in helping accountants because typically um although it's changing fortunately but uh, typically they're run by accountant men who have got their heads in the books and the business and not looking at their health. And with all the stuff we've had in the last few years, um, it's more important now than ever to look after your own health and well-being. So I looked at the health, um, I looked at my own patterns of behaviour, I looked at other people's. I've been mentoring people for many years, I've about 15 years I think now in health, um, and I've seen patterns. So using the disbehavioural profiling that I've been working with now over 25 years, I can see patterns of behavior and health challenges so i've put the two together i've got my own system um which is based on disc but is i call it disc plus because it looks at health and well-being and most disc practitioners don't even know what i'm talking about so if there are any disc practitioners listening in um let's uh, see see what you make of it awesome okay so i filled out my disc profile for you didn't i you did. You proper did. And we've got it proper, to share. Proper, proper guinea pig. So are we gonna are we gonna put that up on the screen then? If you would please, yeah, that would be that would be good. And um I have to stress that um um anybody listening to this, um, I'm not being cruel to, to Ashley at all. It's uh we did have a, a, a quick run through on um his profile because it it's like many which give stories. So every behavior pattern will come with a story. And all of these behavior profiling tools, whatever you use, they are the introduction. They're not the be all and end all, although in my view, they're about 80% of the picture. So understanding somebody's behavior profile pattern is really important. What their behavior pattern is in their in their home life and their um the, from the age of about seven, everybody's behavior pattern has been 
um, pretty consistent from from there on. Yes, we mould and we modify and we can train in things and so on. But our innate behaviour stays the same from the age of about seven. And when we see somebody's behaviour pattern in the outside world compared to how they're presenting at work, how they're showing up in public, when we see the differences, I can tell health challenges. And I can tell if your people or yourself are at burnout, if it exceeded burnout, there's always a story. And then when I go behind the story, when, when I ask, start asking questions on a you know, coaching um, type of mentoring uh, conversation, everything then comes out. And that's what happened with you, Ashley, wasn't it? It certainly was. It certainly was. Right. If you can move the screen that's got, uh, you, I, I can see your screen uh, in, in the in the view and you've got us over the top of your PDF. So if you can move that. Then right. I can... Okay. And I'm like, oh, that's um, it. And then that's it. That's perfect. Now what I can do is I can bring that in. So that's my disc profile. Uh, okay. I'll, put, I'll put you in the bottom corner. And um, so this is a series of questions that I answered online. And um, for those of you that haven't done disc before, it, it gives me four options. And, and I have to pick the one that I most like and the one that I'm least like. And sometimes I'm like all of them or I'm unlike all of them. So it's quite difficult. And you have to do it gut instinct as well, don't you? Yes, you do. It's important that you do it um, spontaneously, because if not, if you're overthinking, that's not the true you. Always yeah. your intuition is, is really important. And um, if I if I, I can't see you, Ashley, so um, I just I'm, I'm definitely I, I'm definitely I'm definitely here. Don't I worry. Know you're here. I can hear you. But I've got so many screens here. It's all gone wonky again. Right. Yeah. I'm going to I'm just going to. Is, is it wonky on your screen yes i can see it. it's like it's right, like staring okay. down one of those infinite mirrors yeah the tunnels right okay so i'm going to just pull up the screen so i can't see you um but uh, but there we are i can hear you it's fine do you want me to describe um, my face as you go through it <laughs> <laughs> okay so what happens um we using the disc mnemonic disc we've got the numbers there the scores we've got the behavior pattern and you can see there very clearly that uh, Ashley's internal behaviour, so that's his natural style of behaviour from the age of about seven upwards, how he is at home, um, is the I and the S are the, are the highest characteristics. Now, if you were to Google uh, DISC, you'll come up with different words. I use these words because I find them gentler, and I've been using these over 20 years um, when I found I was giving feedback to people who were dominant, so the, the DISC um d word um when you search is dominance and i just have people saying i'm not dominant uh, how dare you and i thought no i'm not having this so um i trained about 16 people at the time you'll be going into schools uh, supporting head teachers and uh, classroom teachers helping to understand the children so uh, the i and the s so the i 74 percent the s is 62 percent i and s is all about people so it's about being with people helping people inspiring people making people laugh entertaining people um which is pretty much what you do actually isn't it you, you, it's not so, an ordinary so, podcast so that, ever so so that um no, knowing me and then seeing my results you weren't surprised by by not that at all class? no but, but, right okay and so yeah. so you're saying that i was like this at, before i was seven so um, when I, yeah, as I, as up I grew up to the up, age of seven, yeah, up to okay. the age of seven, seven or right. eight. Yeah. So as I, as I grew up and I, I've, I've talked about it in a previous podcast, uh, my, my parents divorced uh, when I was, when I was 10 or they separated when I was 10 and got divorced soon after that. I, I don't know anything you know, like mm. that because I was only 10. Mm. Um, so you're saying that none of that would have had an effect on my makeup as to where I am today then? No, because, because it was, if it happened it was at after 10, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. However, the conditioning that we have, uh, which is why primary school um, was the last place I would send any children if I had any today, because the conditioning um, goes into a child's mind. A child's mind is an open, empty vessel up until the age of about seven, seven or eight. All the psychologists, they, they all disagree on lots of things, but they agree round about seven, eight years old. Okay. Um, so it's it's the it's the conditioning from school it's the parents it's the environment it's the culture you know it's a whole bundle of things hang on um, a second hang on it's also the grandparents as well isn't it and exactly. i've got, a, I've got yes. a three and a half old grandson so mm -hmm. spending too much time with me is that a good thing or a bad thing well given you've got such a beautiful profile i think it's a good thing but okay. um we, we the, the world can't exist on your profile solely because we'd be having so much fun and um 
We'd never get anything done, would we? Anything. We wouldn't get anything <laughs> done, no. We wouldn't. No, we'd have fun, though. <laughs> Excellent. So what's happening in the external profile at the time that you completed this? So bearing in mind, the external profile can move and does move for, for most people. So you are who you are. And ideally, we want to see all of the graphs looking the same. Now, we've got this external profile pattern, which is pretty much your internal one upside down. So I was happy to. Okay, have so, you're, this so, you're, so you're saying basically, if I, in fact, if I draw a mirror across the middle of that page, it it, it is yeah. like a, it is a it is a total reflection, it is. isn't it? Yeah. Is that so good or bad? Was, um, well, it's neither. It's neither good nor bad. And and this is this is the thing. You can't have a bad profile. You have what you have, and it's about understanding what you have and working with what you have. Which is why I always bang on about the internal profile. That's the most important one to understand. Okay. When we have differences in the external, so how you're presenting in the outside world, that then leads to questions. So the question is, why are you changing your behavior? Why were you changing your behavior at that time? So looking at the pattern, what we were seeing then, your people aspect was going underneath. So we have a center line, the 50 marker. The further away from the 50 marker in either direction, the stronger the characteristic is. So instead of being a people person, so above the line, uh, the typical characteristics that we see day to day, you your people stuff was going un under the counter, so to speak, and your conscientiousness, your attention to, to um, process was increasing and your directness was, was increasing. So directness is about taking the challenge, um, task task driven. So the, the D and the C are task driven uh, aspects, whereas the I and the S are people orientated. So you were very clearly concentrating on a task, a series of tasks, going through a process and, um, you know, man on a mission at the at the detriment of your social side. So what was happening at that time, Ashley? That that is absolutely incredible. And, and, and you know, we, we had a discussion about this and you, you sort of like, oh, 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 I've lost you. Come back, come back wherever. I are. Um, and we, we had a discussion about this. And so right at the beginning of the year, which is when I filled it out, <laughs> I, try, I, t I take on all these things and I just, oh, I'll do this as well. And so at the beginning of the year, I was launching a brand new brand program. So I'm, I'm doing personal branding now and I'm, I'm working with a, with a couple of guys on that. So I'm actually building the program as we speak. So I was getting that set up. And I also delivered a brand new course, um, totally free of charge, uh, to help people with using video. And so I was building that as well. Plus, we just got over Christmas and everything else. So yeah, I was running around like a uh, one of those flies that have got a blue bottom. Um, and also doing a podcast to launch this new show. So yeah, there was an awful lot going on. So, so yeah, that totally explains why you've got the high on the direct stuff, because I was just so focused on getting all of that stuff done. So that's incredible. And so you're saying if I did it today, it'd be a totally different reading. And if I did it next week, it'd be a totally different reading. Absolutely. But your internal profile would stay the same. The The only time an internal profile changes is if something catastrophic happens in your life. So, for example, when I had stage four cancer diagnosis with them giving less than a year to live in 2015, my profile was a shadow of me. It was still me. It was still the same overall shape of my, my natural profile, but it was a smaller version. It was a compressed version. So um, we don't fundamentally change our shape, um, but we, 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 we either we do one of two things. We either go into ourselves, so into our shell, um, or we, we, if, we are, if we're under stress, we often get, get even more um, like our internal profile. So for example, under stress, your your eye could go up over the, you know right off the scale, so to speak. So you could become a complete and utter you know clown type person. Um, you could be worrying because the S is about worry. The higher the S in somebody's natural profile, the more the worry. And with accountants, this is what we find: a lot of accountants' profile um, is high S, high C, low D, low I. Um, which is kind of imagine a line across the page. The D is low, the C is the high, and it's a line that joined the dots. So I can tell from an internal pattern what career type of um, what career an individual should go in, and I can tell by the external profile 
changes, what the shift pattern is, how somebody is stressed, what they're stressed with. And I, and I have got the experience and um, knowledge now on the health so I can help them to reverse. So rather than waiting till somebody goes, you know, has a hissy fit and has a burnout at work, I can help to prevent that. Um, it's very simple for me to do that. And I do it by looking at the difference in the patterns and then going into the story in a sort of a coaching mentoring conversation. No, that is absolutely fascinating. So um, when you're doing this for other people, you can turn around and say, well, actually, you need to do this. You need to do that because I can see this happening in the future and, and stuff like that. Exactly. And, and it's a conversation, but I do it in conjunction. Normally, when I get called into organisations, it's because of a recruitment situation. and Somebody wants to bring a new person in. Um, my view is let's look at the behaviours you want to see in the role, um, because typically what people do is to recruit in their own image. And when you do that, that does, it, it might be good for you know maybe a small department, but it's not necessarily good for the practice. So let's look at the roles that you want to bring in. Let's look at the behaviours. So I do a sense check on whether that's uh, correct or not. O often people will say we want somebody who has attention to detail and is um, uh, good with people, attention to detail. So you're asking for an extrovert and an introvert in the same person, which very rarely happens. Um, so having said that, part of your profile, you are an introvert and an extrovert because one minute you'll be wanting you know, to be on stage playing your guitar, the next minute you might want to be on your own reading a book, um, mm. and that's fine. When we know what our behaviours are, we don't put ourselves in a situation that's working against, and that's what often happens. People are in work environments that don't suit who they are. They, they really don't. So they're trying to be a square peg in a round hole. That's where the health issues come because your body has – Every cell in your body will pick up the negativity and behave in whatever way that, that your body. So people who are high D, they will um, very often be throwing themselves around a gym, going on marathons, road running, all kinds of things because they're challenged. They, they need to have a challenge. And yep. for many men in particular, that you know, running, sporting is, is an obvious challenge for them to take up. Um, but it's not necessarily um, right for everybody, you know. But looking at your summary profile, you can see there that there's a complete mix here. So the system will take the internal and the external and say, typical day-to-day -day pattern, you didn't know which way was up there. You're trying to be all things to all people at that particular time, which isn't healthy. And then when we look further down, I can't send the thing down. There we go. So you can see there the shift pattern. We're changing in all different directions there in, in your case the tension is up at 39%. I won't go into all the, the technicalities of it or where those numbers come from, but um, the, the system picks up. So what, what it then, then does, it says, okay, how, how far can you comfortably adapt? And it gives us a, an adaptability of 38%. Your tension level, because of the changes, is 39%. So you're, you've got by 1%, you've exceeded. So you were at burnout. Now, on a on a short-term basis, it's not a problem. On a long-term basis, it's it's you know recipe for disaster so i can tell this information you know straight away very easily um but it's the interpretation and, and where you go with it so i keep on on flinging my arms around i've got flies here they've the farm have, they spread all the manure and the and the, the, the flies have come in the house lovely that's a that's a nice thought <laughs> charming, isn't it, isn't it? Yeah. charming so there we are shall i stop sharing this now I, no, no, that, that's that's no. that's absolutely that's absolutely fascinating. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so, any anyone can have this done, and, and it, it's the same questions, isn't it? It's exactly it's the, the same, same questions. You yes. didn't use different questions for me that you'll use for Sally and George and no, no, else. not at all. No, no, absolutely not. It's um, and I can use it from the age of about twelve upwards. So uh, most managing partners fit into that category. Uh, we normally start with the managing partner, but then we go to the senior management team, and then we then we do silos with the teams. And then when we're looking at things like um, succession planning, um, we look at recruitment. We look at um, maybe doing some um, team dynamic work. Maybe there's a bit of friction here, or a bit of friction there. We can look at the different personalities. I can have the conversation as a, a non-emotional, you know, uh, extra pair of eyes. And with all the all the managing stuff that I've done in the past, um, quite often you can't see the wood for the trees when you're in it. But when you have somebody mm. like me who's been there, done it, um, can uh, make some constructive suggestions, it's it's helpful. 
Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely uh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, no, if anyone's watching, um, and I, I can see there's a few people watching, but I don't know who you are. Um, and if you've got any questions about this, uh, please drop them in the uh, in the chat or the comments, and uh, we'll, we'll happily answer your questions. Now, looking at my profile, am I doing the right job, Elaine? And um, I would say yes, because high eyes are really good that. at training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hi I, I wouldn't i wouldn't hire you as an accountant not in no, a million that's a, years that's, that's, that's okay that's okay my my my, my, my books are in, in in perfect order for those of you yeah. who are watching because <laughs> i have an accountant helping me but no you're right you're right and, and but but we do end up in the wrong job don't we and i guess you see that with when you're doing those those profiles yes yeah and that's why i i started uh, working in schools as a, an external consultant in the 90s because i could see had I been given guidance on my behavior pattern, the other thing as well I can and look at is it's it's um every day I see comments about ADHD and um you know oh if only you'd focus and this that and the other and I was told that continue at school oh if only you could concentrate and focus you'd be really good and except I couldn't wait to get the hell out of school if I'd had the guidance now that I can give to young people. And I do, I do help mentor some schools in Nottingham through a charity that I've trained. They use my system. And it's so rewarding when I can see that um, I'm making a difference, even though I'm based here in the Algarve in Portugal, in, uh, for people who don't know. Um, working remotely is wonderful. I do go over to the UK and I have worked with some uh, big practices um, over the years. But uh, I do like my life here in the Algarve. It flies and all. Flies and all, they're everywhere, honestly. I've just got a new dog and I have to have the door open for the dog to go in and out. And, of course, the blinking flies are coming in. I don't know. Uh, oh, Small look, price it, to pay. It's, it's, yeah, it's really cold and wintry here, so the flies aren't even around. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's fine. Um, so, so the other the other aspect um, uh, of, of, of what you do is is health mentoring as well, isn't it? Because you, you've, you've, you've just told us you've, you've you managed to not have a kidney disease anymore how on earth do you do that surely you well, just take surely you just take drugs and and keep it at bay if you've got a kidney disease well you, you end up with kidney failure and on dialysis and and a six foot under if if um in my experiences that's that's what can happen so um i was uh i was a competitive swimmer in my teens and um i was continued getting water work infections i'd either projectile vomit or i would um, have a, a you know I uh, can't think what the word is uh, but water work infection and then you um, I was told it was this condition that condition I was told at, at the age of 16 I'd never even seen a man with no clothes on I was told at 16 I was a whore by this uh, wicked wicked uh, gynecologist woman who was horrible absolutely horrible um, anyway um, I think I was about 21, 22, 22, I think. And I got diagnosed with this condition. It's very rare called medullary sponge kidneys where the, 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 the pump kind of thing, the, the clearance uh, valves weren't working properly. So hence the muck would build up and I would either, either, either end it would, it would come out. Um, and then I was put on antibiotics and I, there I stayed for over 20 years on a wow. rotating cycle of antibiotics. And I, in my forties, I was introduced to, a chiropractor whose girlfriend was a nutritionist and I still use the same hair analysis today with my clients that she used with me over 20 years ago um, which is just amazing so I can tell by looking at a variety of different blood tests hair analysis uh, finger bit blood tests that I do in, in other areas so I can tell with the behavior of the person if it's their behavior that's got them into trouble and, and brought upon their their um, illness um, what's happening in their blood, um, the minerals, the heavy metals. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I look at and um, I can tell what's going on without even meeting some. It's like having a doctor in your pocket. And I've got a health hub wow. that I have. Um, I do health networking Mondays, Fridays um, with my own little tribe where everybody's welcome to join. Oh, fantastic. So, th so that is maybe where Ruth can come and uh, join. Uh, so Ruth has just asked a question. You can work with individuals just on a personal life lef level. So, so you know, you, you've talked about going into businesses and helping um, accountants and what have you. Could you, you know, just work with somebody on a, on a life level? 
Absolutely. I have done for many years, Ruth. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So from, as I say, from 12 year olds, um, right up to senior business. Execs. And that's why I chose the disc model to, to work with all those years ago, because it's very simple, very straightforward. And um, it's easy, understandable. But I've now extended and I've got my own version that's been developed by um, Noel Go Global Systems, who um, who support me on my IT development work. They're, they're brilliant, very helpful. Right. Now, if you're listening on the podcast, uh, all of this information will be in the show notes. But uh, live, so for people like Ruth who's watching live, how can we get hold of you, please? So my, um, I've got two websites. One is elainegodley.com, and that's mo mostly for accountants, accountants and lawyers, a bit about my, my background um, in that field. And the health one is discplus.health. Um, so that gives you more information about the health testing and so on. Fantastic. And you're on LinkedIn as well, aren't you? So uh, I'm all uh, over LinkedIn. Yes. I'm known perfect. as the disc, the disc profiler is my kind of handle on uh, oh, LinkedIn. And so, so talking about LinkedIn, because it, it, it I, I want to help more people with LinkedIn. Have you got a question for me today on, on things to do on LinkedIn and anything you're struggling on, anything you want to know? I've, I've just set up a new page. Um, I don't have a, a disc page. I have my own personal profile, which um, I've got you know reasonable following. But I've just set up a health page and I'm struggling to get that, I get, get traction with it. So I've got a, a newsletter that I've got on my main individual profile. I've got 1,200 subscribers to my newsletter on that. But of course, last week, um, I didn't realize what I was doing. I did a, a, a newsletter and I put it on my perfect health and I think I've got three subscribers. <laughs> so right. I've gone from... 1200 so how do i how do i mix the two i don't know how right, to do okay. that so i'm just going to have a look at your profile um so i wonder if i can actually share this you're happy for me to share your profile on screen of course yes yeah yes. absolutely so let's let's do that then and it's that one there so this is your this is your personal page um but you say you've got a you've got a company page as well so if we scroll down um i've got a the perfect health hub um new where's, page where's that have you actually have you actually created if you said that you're a, a, a actual team member of that perfect health page that's, no that, there we go that, that's the answer that, to, to that's, that's, the that's, first that's, thing. that's the first thing so perf what's it called perfect perfect health hub it'd help if i could spell wouldn't it so if you're listening, if you're listening on on uh, the podcast, you're not going to see any of this. But what I'm doing is I'm actually going into the search uh, in LinkedIn and putting in Perfect Health Hub. And that's bringing up, uh, we want companies. And there it is right at the top, Perfect yeah. Health Hub. That's you, isn't it? I recognize the logo. Yeah, that's so it, the Perfect okay. Health Hub, yeah. Right, okay. So if I go to employees, it doesn't have any employees. So the oh, first thing okay. you need to do, first thing you right. need to do is in your experience section of your LinkedIn. So I'm just going to go into my profile to show you exactly how to do that. Oh, this is cool. You come on down to experience and then you click the plus button. And when you click okay. that plus button, you can add a brand new position. And what I can actually do, I can actually say that I work for Perfect Health Hub. There it is. So I can actually create oh. and I can, I can turn around there and I can say I'm the managing director of the Perfect Health Hub. Yeah. So that's what you need to do. And okay. then what that would do, and I'm, I'm not, you can notify, and what I would do is I would turn that button on. So right at the very top, it says notify your network. And if you turn that button on, yes. what will actually happen as soon as you add it, everybody in your network will then get a notification that you've got a new job. Okay. Right? And the new job is at Perfect Health Hub. So everybody will then see the Perfect Health Hub. Right, how's, brilliant. How's okay. that? That's that's excellent. That's right. a perfect, uh, perfect uh, answer. And also from that, I guess I could do a video, an introduction video, saying um, all about it because people, you know, it's not like I've got a new job. I've been doing it for ages, but yeah, good. Right, thinking. but here's 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 something here's something really interesting, and this is what I talk to people about all the time on LinkedIn, is. People buy from people who they know, like, and trust. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to test you now. Do you know the name of my business? And I don't mind what your answer is, but do you know the name of my business? Um, 
actually no i don't it, brilliant LinkedIn, well no, live and linking no well that's that's the name of the podcast but program, you, don't know the yeah. name, you, you don't know the name of my business because you deal yeah. with ashley leads because you know yeah. ashley leads you like ashley mm -hmm. leads you trust ashley leads yeah? yeah and it's exactly the same with elaine godley and if we look at your profile you've got six thousand six hundred and forty one followers yeah so if you do anything mm -hmm. on linkedin as elaine yeah more people are going to see it than if you do as the perfect health hub exactly so which is it, why i've never um put the hub on there but yeah. I've, somebody said to me recently i should have the hub on there because i've got a membership thing so maybe i should not bother with so, it so no, you've got it there now so what i would do is i'd, I'd create yourself as a, as a as an employee of that business yes. and then what would happen you it, it would come up here if you wanted to come up here and then you'd have the logo okay. in there as well and look really neat ah, so if, okay. I, if i just show you my profile again so the name of my business is full cup ah. coaching yeah. Right. So, but I've got a little logo there, and it looks a little bit more professional. Okay. Good idea. Right. I will do that forthwith. Thank you. No, that's absolutely fine. And that's the whole idea of me setting up this show is when my guests have a question, I can actually help them. Um, that's it. That's half an hour. Elaine, thank you mm -hmm. so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom and um, giving me a kick up the butt on my profile. If anyone wants to get in touch with Elaine, we know how to get hold of her now. Thank you to Ruth for your questions, and I will be back next week. Um, I got a super duper special show next week uh, because I have got Mr. LinkedIn himself, um, Mark Williams. He does an amazing podcast called uh, LinkedIn Formed. I was a guest on his podcast a few weeks ago, um, so I'm repaying the favor or vice versa. And so I cannot wait to have a chat with him. And we are gonna, just going to talk all about LinkedIn. So if you want to know anything about LinkedIn, we've got Mr. LinkedIn himself coming on. So uh, looking forward to that. But uh, Elaine. Thank you very much indeed. It's lovely to see you. Um, good luck with your little doggy. Is your little doggy got a name? Waggy. Waggy. Oh, yeah. Uh, get, because, get, yeah, get this, got Ashley. He's got a tail. It, he, he came to me with the name of Waggy because he's always wagging his tail. Fantastic. Um, so that means, I guess that means I'm Wagga Mummy. Oh, uh, uh, you're a Waggy Mummy. You're a Waggy mama. Mummy. You're a wagon mama. That is awesome. Uh, Elaine, what a, lovely, what a lovely way to end the show. Thank you so much. And uh, see you again next week. Cheerio now. Bye-bye. You get out what you put in. Never gonna lose, never gonna win. Long as you have.